The study said in, in an average of 0.9% of immigrants end up leaving Canada, but that number has risen to 1.18% in 2019. <laughs> and right. I'm like, can we, can we actually be fucking serious? In other words, 60,000 people have left the country. They're fucking bringing in millions. That's a drop in the bucket. I got into a, like a text discussion on um, you know, over text or whatever with a, with a buddy of mine. He sent me this, which he found on probably Twitter. Toronto area buyers are walking away from deposits on new homes, some losing as much as $300,000. So have you seen that? Yeah. Yeah, okay. So he wrote WTF to me. I said... Uh, I basically said, you don't actually believe that, right? Because the post makes it seem like a ton of people are doing it, and I don't think a ton of people are doing it. Yeah, that it. headline's pretty vague. It, it, it's, it could yeah, be three it's people. Exactly, right? So you got three people out of, like, millions. Um, so then that's basically what I wrote. And he wrote, how can someone just lose and walk away from $300,000? And I'm like, he's like, I would kill myself. And he's like, and I'm like, Any, anybody in their right mind w- wouldn't just simply, like, walk away. Right, they'd try everything. They'd restructure certain things. They'd even get privates or, or you know, private loans or like something. Something will 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 have to happen. And then um, uh, he wrote, "This is why I sent this to you." And he's like, it "Makes no sense." And I was like, and then I wrote, "They know, they know." Macklem says Bank of Canada could cut rates before inflation reaches target. So I'm like, they fucking know what's coming down the pipe. They know that they can't keep rates high. They know that the majority of the country is going to have to remortgage in a year or two. So that's why they're... It's almost like... This is so funny. As soon as like these guys like this start putting these tidbits out in the market, you know what's coming. You already know what's coming, right? So then, So then I wrote after that... After writing, they know. I wrote, goalposts will move, and if you don't own real estate now, good luck ever getting in again. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Seriously. 100%. Right? So then I wrote, four to one leverage plus tenant paying your mortgage down plus appreciation. Uh, I, and I wrote, because of above, because of what he says. In other words, goalposts are moving. Uh, the fact we barely have supply, M2 money supply. Uh, the wars and uh, the wars and the need to print more, et cetera, et cetera. Real estate will create an insane amount of wealth, just like it always has. Um, and then I put. Then you also have the cost of build, uh, cost of the build. Nothing ever gets less expensive in the future. It always commodity prices are always continuing to increase. There's ebbs and flows, but the trajectory is always significantly increasing. And I and then I also put right now. The general population in Canada, 65% own a house and 35% rent. We will simply see these numbers inverted and multiple generations and families will live in the same fucking house, just like when Western Europeans came. Uh, yeah, just Western Europeans, yeah. Just like when Western Europeans came here to Canada and just like how immigrants in other countries are currently living and are accustomed to it. And accustomed to it. My mom, when she came here from Portugal, there was 13 people living in a two-bed house, mm-hmm. one bath. That's what's going to start happening. You already see it, right? Oh, yeah. Multiple generations or multiple families buying into one house. There's a local mortgage company that has started like a Tinder for people to buy houses together. Seriously? Yeah, like if you can't afford wow. a house on your own, try to link with somebody that's also looking for a house, combine your incomes and buy together. Unknown people. And, and, and think about how much easier that's actually going to be. Think about that, right? If you actually think about... Now we have technology that can help us facilitate things like that. Yeah. At scale. It's not even it's not even uh it's unprecedented, right? And then I put and then I put uh and then obviously uh we have um and then also according to Stats Canada, the country's population could hit fifty the fifty million mark within ten years. Yeah, That's we're fucking projected nuts. to double within 20 or something like 20 that. years yeah. like double now that's even that's just in 10 we're going to increase yeah. by 25 percent. that's f- huge um and then and then i wrote obviously there's a 3.5 million uh million housing unit shortage currently oh, in canada <laughs> you're just blasting well man. like I, I i don't know and then on top of it like that's going to increase by 25 percent. obviously when you have already a housing shortage that short 3.5 million million housing units on top of the fact that our population is increasing by 25% in the next 10 years. Insane, okay? Um, and, then, and then he wrote, uh, my cleaning lady is from Ukraine. She's leaving for Poland at the end of the month. She told me that it's impossible for her to make it in Canada. 
Uh, he's like, I don't really know how these immigrants are supposed to survive. And I said, they'll, they'll double up just like my mom did when she came here from Portugal. Like this, this is a, a, an anecdotal situation. Yeah. Well, That's I, not the norm. I, yeah. So I hear this argument all the time. Like, oh, these Indians are leaving at a record pace. Ba- or sorry. I got another one for that. Immigrants. Yeah. hundred yeah. percent. Now then I see a clip of like a major Indian city. I forget which one. And there's a job opening a job. Oh whatever. yeah. And there's like yeah. a million people applying for this one job. Yeah, there's like a liner on the block. So yeah, Canada is like you know, yeah, not the greatest spot to be right now, but it's relatively better than. Yeah. So then I wrote. So then I wrote. They'll, do, they'll just double up, just like my mom did when she came here, and and they're gonna rent. They're not gonna buy. They're gonna rent. Um, when my mom came here from Portugal, there was 13 people living in a two bed house. Uh, I'm already seeing it in my rentals. I already see it, uh, and it's getting more and more popular because uh, you are right. It's completely unaffordable. And, uh, but I put, this isn't going to stop. This only means real estate will get significantly more expensive. You're also assuming expectations will not adjust. They will absolutely adjust. Right. Right now. That's a good point. Exactly. Yeah. Expectations are you can own a, a single family home because of our, the generation prior to us. Right. It was easy to get into a single family home. Our generation, even growing up, the expectation was go buy a house. You could live in it. Not a problem. It's oh, yeah. going to be affordable. Now the next generation coming up behind us, that expectation will change. Yeah. It's going well, to have to. No, it's changing. It's changing. It is changing. Yeah. 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 Um, and then he wrote, um, "My parent, his parents saved hardcore. My dad built houses we lived in. He did. Ma- he uh, did the majority of work. My parents couldn't sleep at night, owing money to the bank. They paid off debt fast. Uh, they, they just don't understand how the financial system works, which is again what." Western Europeans were also pushed into, right? They were, you have to pay your house. I remember that. You have to pay your house off as soon as possible. You got to get that shit paid off, right? Which is like totally, completely opposite to what I feel. Um, but I don't see how immigrants are doing the same. You come to Canada and don't hustle your ass off. You got zero chance of survival. And I'm like, well, that, that, you're missing the point, right? You, you apply for social services and you get them here. I see it all the time in my, in my tenants. The majority of them don't actually work. They just don't work. And a lot of them are immigrants and they get social social assistance. You see it. Oh, yeah. It, it happened the other day. Yeah. Well, exactly. I was touring a property, a multiplex, and uh, the, the tenants there didn't speak barely any English. So there's like an interpreter down this hall came down <clears throat> Is that to right? interpret. Wow. And I was saying, like, what do you do for work? And he says, oh, I, I, I don't do anything. I just moved here. I'm going to school. Yeah. Government pays me X amount. And then each kid, they pay us X amount. Yep. And that was it. And I did the math, and it was somewhere around five, five, six grand a month in total uh, income. And then, Isn't she, that nuts? you know, she was pregnant with another kid, and I'm like, well, it makes how many kids? Like she said, per kid, the kids weren't there, so I don't know how many that. But uh, she was pregnant with another kid. Wow! Right, so it may, it's so there incentivizing you go. for sure. Uh, yeah, exactly. Okay, so then, so then I wrote. I don't think you realize how much our government gives immigrants. I've seen the checks come in for my tenants. Um, that's how a lot of my tenants pay. And I put, this is also inflationary. And oh, I said, ever? oh, it's crazy. And then I said, I think the problem is that you're looking at this from a logical perspective. And from the perspective of housing, it's not a, it's not a right. Um, however, the way the government feels about housing is that it is a right. And as long as you apply it, uh, being an immigrant, you will get it as long, uh, apply for it, apply for the social services that uh, uh, afford you a home as a right. You, you get what I'm trying to say? The way the government feels is that housing is a right. You should have a right to own housing. He's looking at it from the perspective of in order to own a house, you have to hustle your ass off to be able to have the ability uh, and, and the privilege to, to own, own a house, right? Not not the privilege, the right. Not Exactly. Well, but I'm, 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 I'm looking. He's, in some people's minds, yeah. though, it's the right to own. Exactly. Yeah, what I'm saying is, is he's looking at it not from the perspective uh, so yeah. to, uh, to be a right to own real estate. He's looking at it like real estate, like owning a house is not a right. You have to earn it, right? That's the way that he's looking at it. And I'm like, no, no, no. You're looking at it the wrong way. When you're an immigrant, because he's referring to, I'm not saying like immigrant immigrants are causing the issue. That's not what I'm saying here. He's looking at, at it from the perspective of immigrants are not able, going, going to or currently unable to afford housing. That's the way he's looking at it. And I'm like, no, 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 you can't look at it that way because I do agree with you. You have to look at it from the perspective of the government is, is a, a, awarding them the right to have housing, right? But you're looking at it as from the perspective of, uh, the the treating housing as like earning it, 
but that's not what the government considers <laughs> yeah, yeah. housing. Yeah. You get what I mean? You don't have to, you, if, according to the government, you don't have to earn housing. It's a right to have housing. And that's what we're talking about here, right? So then I wrote, I think the problem is you're looking at it from the logical perspective and from the perspective of housing is not a right. Uh, however, the fact that is the government feels that housing is a right. And as so long as you apply for it, being an immigrant or even a non-immigrant, um, you will get it as long as the socialist narrative continues with respect to real estate and will continue to produce millionaires higher than any other rate in any other industry, just like it always has. And it always will. Um, and I put, there's a reason why, you know, a lot of people that have gotten rich from real estate and barely any from the stock market and precious metals. There's a fucking reason. And then, uh, he wrote it definitely, especially in this town. And I wrote, I, I, any, I town. Didn't, I, yeah, any town, it doesn't matter. Like not just this town, it's any town, right? Because you go back when I started, it was bleak. Like, so you, you have to zoom out a little bit from the last 10 years. Like it, it, even still before, I still even prior to 2008 and even in 2008, I still knew way more millionaires based off of real estate than any other industry well, there was. Even if you were in the bigger cities where like, yeah. you know, these stockbrokers and stuff probably make a lot of money. Uh, those aren't, like your friends. Those yeah. are like the guys that run the hedge funds that For are sure. siphoning money from the public. 100%. You know, whatever. It's not your social network that For you sure. know. 100%. But in our social networks, we know a yeah. hundred people that have gotten wealthy in real estate. Yeah, I'm not talking about yeah. people who just Google. I'm talking about <laughs> yeah. people that yeah. actually you like know we, them we know. Yeah, Regular we know. people that have done it through yeah. this median. Exactly. And then he, then he sent me a screenshot of this... Uh, Financial post record spike in number of immigrants leaving Canada in recent years, study says. And this is like abnormally high number of immigrants granted permanent residence uh, between 1982 and 2018 left between 2016 and 19. And then I'm like, okay, hold on a minute. Let me get a little bit of context for what he's posting. Got to get the context. Okay. So then, <laughs> then I, I found like the, the actual data in the actual uh, article. Canada, Canada saw a record number of immigrants leave Canada between twenty, uh, between sixteen and nineteen, two thousand sixteen and two thousand nineteen. A new study urges Canada to do more to maintain these newcomers, which I don't disagree with. Uh, the study said, i.e., build more infrastructure to handle it, um, and then immigration won't be an issue, right? If a lot of people, because I know a lot of people call for the need for immigration, and then we say, well, immigration is actually perpetuating the housing issue. Because it's not necessarily the immigration, and I agree with people. It's the lack of infrastructure to be able to support immigration properly. They should grow together. Exactly. Infrastructure but, and but it's population. A, but it also is immigration. So it's like they go hand in hand. You can't like you, you can't not no, have one with the other. Intelligent immigration. It, it, exactly. Yeah. There That's you it. go. Yeah. And then I and then uh, again this article goes and then the study said in an average of zero point nine percent of immigrants end up leaving the study said in, in an average of 0.9% of immigrants end up leaving Canada but that number has risen to 1.18% 1. in 2019 <laughs> oh and I'm like can we can we actually be fucking serious in other words 60,000 people have left the country they're fucking bringing in millions that's a drop in the bucket it's nothing i guarantee fucking to you yeah. that's probably right in line with any other country so it's pretty much irrelevant. And not all, I bet a lot of them are not because they can't make it here. Yeah. It's because they've chosen for other reasons yeah. to go. 100%. Exactly. You know, whatever. Jobs, whatever. So I just yeah. put, that's fuck all. And I put LOL record numbers. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, come on. Can we, can we actually like, again, the fear mongering, right? And the news and the media and everything. It's, it's, it's almost, it's literally legitimately laughable. Yeah. You what know, you see these headlines and it's fucking crazy. All it is, it's the same headlines that we put out in these fucking clip when we clip out the podcast i'm trying to get your attention it's the same fucking thing yeah, you don't no, think no. the editor of that paper or that, those articles and financial posts is trying to get your attention they know you're not going to fucking read it yeah they know They're, they know you're going to read the headlines and do exactly that and post it to all your buddies and be like holy fuck everybody's leaving here and you don't even need i don't even need to read that article to yeah. know it doesn't matter even if 30 percent of them left they could just up the immigration target 100%. by 30 percent and there's a wave of people waiting to get into a country like Canada 100 percent you don't it, understand how it, bad it is in other countries exactly the, and that that's what I th the I th financial system is yeah. corrupt even more corrupt the political system is even more corrupt the police are corrupt everything like you're we have an infinite de demand it's all relative to come here. Yeah, yeah it's all relative right like uh, you, you can you can complain about Canada all you want the US all you want but it's all relative and the the 
relative comparison is not a utopian. The relative comparison is other countries in the world. Okay, that, that these people are coming from, hundred percent, including our parents, exactly, and grandparents. They're as well. here for a reason. Yeah. My parents, my mom came from Azores, Portugal, with my grandmother, and there's a reason. My dad's family, is, you know, came from Northern Ireland. Like, th- there's a fucking reason yeah. why they came here. It's not because they were like just enjoying life where they're from. Yeah. Oh, we're they living, wouldn't have left. Yeah, we're we're wealthy and loving our lives here in this amazing city. Let's just uproot our whole family and go to Canada. No, it's yeah. it's you were pushed out or f- yeah. almost forced out. So what I find really interesting in all this is like people are. How do you not see what's happening in the country from the housing perspective? I just don't understand. How you, how there's still people that think like, oh, housing is going to crash and there's not enough demand and like nobody's going to be able to afford a home. And I, I think I know why it's happening. It's because headlines are very deceiving. And what people are doing is they're listening to politicians' words instead of actually looking at what's happening and what the actual actions are. Well, hey, what about this? What, what if they, what, what if the politicians perpetuate headlines like that or create them or push them or well, whatever, right? And they yeah. do. We all know that they do. But say for, say hypothetically, we don't actually know if they do. We're hypothesizing right now that they do. And I have a feeling we're right, but whatever. We don't actually have physical proof that they do, whatever. But say that's what they're doing, right? It's kind of a better move to do that than to continue to just to push interest rates up higher and higher and higher without actually the tactics of fear mongering. I'd rather have that. Right. And then it kind of sets people back on the, on the sidelines. Well, the fear mongering is just as valuable as the rate hikes. For sure. Yeah. Exactly. And that's what I'm saying. Right. Yeah. So maybe this is just part of all the overall strategy, which I'm sure it is. Yeah. yeah. Right. Oh, so instead definitely. of our rates going up to like, you know, double digits, they'll sit right here for a bit. They'll fear monger in the news and then shit will just come back down. Yeah. And part of it is we're, you would have never seen Tiff Macklem say we can cut rates before rate interest is or sorry uh, inflation is down to two percent. He wouldn't have said that in the past year. Why? Because he had to say the most negative stuff possible consistently for one to two years straight to get people's minds thinking that the world is ending. So why is he saying that now? You're setting the stage for, for a near term, relatively near term pauses and or cuts. Like, it's inevitable. Mm-hmm. It's inevitable. We don't know when. We don't know at what levels. Well, it's happening now, right? People are backing off. The bond yields have yeah. dropped a little bit. Uh, that's an indication as well um, of, like, we might have reached the peak of the interest rates. We probably have. If I had to bet, I would say that this is the peak. I just can't think. The system's not built for rate hikes. People, when you, they don't understand the system and the monetary system, so they don't understand that. Like, so break it down real quick. It's a, it's a fiat money, which means it's backed by nothing, which means mm. they print it at will. Mm. They printed too much, too fast, which showed their cards, which is, oh, like, shoot. And during in, what period? The COVID period? The COVID period, yeah. yeah. Right. Now, normally, they, they're always printing money. It's always mm. a deficit. They're always cr- putting more money in the system. Mm. But the inflation is hidden at 2 to 7% a year, let's say. Mm. 2% core, 7 to 10% real mm. inflation, the stuff that you really want. Yeah. They showed their cards by saying, oh, my God, inflation is actually burning a hole in my pocket. Now the middle class has become aware, like, oh, shoot, inflation's like a big deal. My raises aren't keeping up with with the cost of living. People are starting to get pissed off. They have to cover that up now. They have to get inflation core back down to 2%. Okay, Once it's back down to 2%, the game continues, which is you know relatively low interest rates and um, 2 to 10% inflation in the economy which means prices of everything goods services real estate will continue to rise at two to ten percent compound annually in like a country like canada where it's relatively stable inflation historically mm. you know you go to argentina your va- your currency is be- being devalued at 50 percent a year right so it's much more noticeable um so that the game is on a fiat money the game is money printing and inflation that, mm. that, that's how the system works because they screwed up so bad, they've got to get the game back in check and then the game continues. Mm. So it's only a matter of time. People yeah. think that the game's going to show, oh, they're going to go back to a hard money. <laughs> they're going to stop running deficits and they're going to stop printing money. And that was an anomaly, COVID. No, no, no. COVID was an anomaly how much they did it. Mm. They screwed up in a way, yeah, right? Yeah, so yeah. that's why we're sitting here harping on real estate as this long-term no-brainer investment. When we say long-term, we don't know when 
you know, the game continue. <laughs> Everything okay? Yeah, no, I'm, I'm just, I remember how the, yeah, I know. <laughs> I got a lot going on right now. 